Here's our one for um, Easter. This finishes the six weeks of Easter that we were doing with God's grace, great, God's grace is great. So the topic today is bright as bright and shining oh, as the sun. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's part of our song. So like I said, we've been talking about the song Amazing Grace all through Lent and here up to Easter. And there's no more grace more amazing than the happy news on Easter morning. Does anybody know why we're happy on Easter morning? Why are we, why do we celebrate Easter? Anybody? Wait. For Jesus' death. Right. And his resurrection. He comes back to life. Good Friday, he dies. Easter, he is risen. He's alive. So we're all going to say together, he is risen. You ready? One, two, three. He, he is, is risen. risen. Okay, now we're going to say, he is risen indeed. You ready? He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Then we're going to say, say, hallelujah. Okay, so we're going to say these three things. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Okay, so make no mistake here. We're going to read this scripture. Does anybody want to read? Can anybody read this? You want to read? Bailey, you want to read? Wait, you want to read? You're the leader. Can you read that? After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Mandolin and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, he has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. 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 He, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. Mm -hmm. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the woman turned away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. And suddenly Jesus met them. Breathing, he said, they came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to him, do not be afraid. Go and tell my mother so that to go to Galilee. There, there they will see you. Okay, so that's our Easter story right there. Jesus, well, first of all, you know he was laid in the tomb, right? And if you look up here, this is the inside of the tomb, and Jesus was laid here. And the women went with burial things to prepare his body for his final resting place. And they got there, and the tomb was empty. Right? That's what it tells us. But on their way, there was what? What happened? Earthquake. 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 So you imagine, you're walking down the path to go to the tomb. Earthquake. Angel of the Lord came down rolled back the stone and was sitting on top of it. So if you were these women walking down there to take care of Jesus' body and you've seen all this, would you not be a little bit afraid? I think I would. But it's no mistake that the women came at sunrise to the tomb on Easter to find the stone rolled away because scripture tells us how it happened. And like the sun in the sky, just like we still see the sun in the sky today, right? We know it's there, right? We see it. We know the sun's going to come up in the mornings. Same thing, the Son of God has risen, just as he said he would, has risen from the dead. So the writer of the following verse, well, let me show you this one first. This is our he is risen, he is risen indeed. And that's Jesus coming out of the tomb, and that's just the cross where the end was. And this is where the stone was rolled away. And you can see, they get there and they're like, wow, how did this happen? Right? Okay, so we're up to our song. And the writer, of course, reminds us in this last verse of our song, Amazing Grace, that we've been singing all along. What is that? The stone rolled away. 
the Lord. Okay, those are people we were praying for. We'll go over that here in a little bit. But the writer of the following verse reminds us of the glory to be revealed in heaven when we are there with the risen Jesus. So we're going to sing this next verse together to our tune, Amazing Grace, which some of you bound to know it by now because you've heard it several times. And uh, music. Okay, we're going to do the We've Been There in 10,000 Years, but that's a long time, isn't it? Glasses up so I can see far. Okay, you guys ready? Amazing Grace. Okay, that's how it goes. then we're going to be, if you're a believer in Jesus and believe in the word of the Bible, you're going to be in heaven with Jesus and God. And that's that's our goal as Christians. We, we fear no death because we know where we're going to be. So we have no less days to sing God's praise while we're here. And while we're singing God's praise, we're spreading his word. We're telling others about Jesus and what happened and what a change he can make in your life. So I have a little video here I guys want you guys to watch. It's about a minute and a half long. And it'll tell you a little bit more about Easter. How long is a minute? Really quick. Are there any kids out there? I sure hope so. Today we're going to learn about race. You were created perfect. God made no mistakes in what he made. The first people, Adam and Eve, disobeyed God and tried to be in charge. They sinned and broke God's heart. Their relationship with God was shattered. Sin affected everything, even you and me, because we sinned too. Nothing was left untouched. We were hopelessly lost until God sent his one and only son. His name was Jesus. He died on a cross for you to pay for our rebellion. In his death, we were given life. When he rose from the dead, we were made whole. When we place our hope and trust in him, by grace and through faith, we will be saved. Raise your hand if you like gifts. Who likes gifts? I love a present. Raise hey, your hand. Who over there doesn't like gifts? Raise your hands. We all like gifts. I like don't gifts. We? Jesus gives all of us a gift. It's called grace. Have you ever gotten a gift when you were naughty? I don't think so. I would guess you got a time out. Did you know Jesus took all of our naughty stuff with him on the cross? Jesus died so that we can have grace. His gift of grace can't be earned. That is what makes grace the most special gift of all. We should be thankful every day for God's grace. I'll see you next time. Okay. It was creepy. It was creepy. <laughs> Sometimes. Okay, so that video talked a little bit about grace and the grace God gave us through Jesus coming to earth. But the resurrection of Jesus that we celebrate on Easter, which was, what, a week ago now, reminds us that the light of life and the light of God's grace will continue forever because God's love lasts forever. It's ever and ever and ever beyond us even being here, short of being raptured to heaven. It, 
His love will continue till Jesus comes again to earth to take us to his paradise above. And the Bible tells us about Jesus preparing a place for us up in heaven. And if you read in the scriptures, it tells you there's many mansions. The streets are gold. Um, what other things? Carol, I'm going blank. Many mansions. Delaney, think of anything? Streets of gold. Yeah, the streets of gold, many mansions. He prepares a room, a place just for you. You'll have your own little place, we're told. Doesn't say it's little, doesn't, doesn't say it's big. Life. Yep, joy, no sorrow, no tears, no crying, no pain, no sickness. We'll be praising God. There's a lot that goes on up here where Jesus is for us. So each day in heaven and each day on earth is a day to praise God for his grace towards us in Jesus. So our life now has a meaning and a purpose, and the hope is because Jesus rose on Easter. Without his resurrection, we would not have hope because we would be eternally separated from God. Once Adam and Eve sinned, remember when we talked about that back in the garden? We became separated from God. Jesus came and made the way for us to be back into God's presence. He took all of our sins, all the bad things we do, the things that we continue doing over and over, he made them all go away. They exist no more. So, so how can we sing God's praises for his grace in Jesus? Does anybody know how we can sing? Is there any songs you guys like that praise Jesus? We just sang one. Jesus likes that song. At least I think he does. We sing it a lot in church. We can sing his praises by actually singing and telling others about God. You can talk to people. You can sing to people. You can, you don't even have to have a song. You guys ever make up songs? We're going to do that. We're going to get a tune, and we're going to make up a song. Anybody good at that? Okay, give us an idea. <laughs> give us an idea. Say, okay, give me an idea. About Easter. Bunny's in it. Hmm. Let's see. Give me one more. Besides bunnies, Victoria. What else? Okay, give me another subject for the song. Just bunnies. Anybody else? Okay, Nicholas? Easter eggs. We have Easter eggs and bunnies in our song. Sunday's coming. Sunday's coming. Sunday's coming. Okay, so once there was an Easter bunny hopping down the trail with his basket full of eggs he saw, the cross that Jesus bore, and on that Sunday morning the bunny came to the church to praise Jesus and say, Hallelujah. So you can make a song up. So you guys get to make up a song. Anybody want to try to make up a song? Any tune. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Okay, go ahead. Oh, you can do it. Nana. No, Nana. You said Nana first, so it's Nana. Nana has to sing it. Nana has to sing it. She's good at singing. No, I'm not. Delaney, are you good at this? No. Think of a funny song. Wait. Victoria? Oh, you all are so bashful. Nicholas? No. No songsters here. Oh, Siobhan's sitting over there hiding, saying she's not going to see me now. And you know what's going to happen? They're going to go to get home and get in that truck, and they're all going to be singing songs. I know. Now I'm going to be laughing. <laughs> all right. We, we're moving on here because we have a lot to do. But that's just it. When you sing joyful songs about Jesus and you praise him, you'll find you'll get a smile on your face even when you're in a grumpy mood. It's amazing how that changes you. And when you read the Bible and you get things out of the Bible, the whole book of Psalms is all praise. All of it. King David's, he sang almost all the song, psalms he are played songs. An instrument. So we need to listen to the word and we need to talk to people about the Bible. And we can let the love of God be known through us by how we act, by what we do, and how we love and care for others. 
So the Easter Gospel, which I forgot to put up, my friend, I love him, he's praising. If you guys ever put your t iTunes or your thingies in your ear and listen to the music, nobody does that anymore, I guess. I don't have it. You don't have it? Delaney do. does. When you go running, don't you usually have your thing in your ear while you're running? Run you don't run anymore. No. Well, when you used to run. Yeah, I do. You do? You run with those? And I don't run. But do you guys ever do anything that you have those in your ears? Does it yeah. make it go easier? Like if you're putting a peppy song on, and so, okay, say I'm walking to, oh, I wish I was there to be tempted. And when the yeah. saints come and when the saints in, when the saints come, come in, right. in. Your, your whole tune changes, your, your tempo changes. The same with when you sing with joy. When you praise God with joy, your whole heart changes. So we're going to go on into our last scripture here. And it's about the Easter gospel reminding us in Matthew 28, 10, that the first thing that the risen Jesus told the women at the empty tomb to do was to what? Okay, these are the first, imagine this. Jesus come out of the tomb, he was there. The women didn't know who he was because he hadn't revealed himself to them yet, right? And then he came back up to them and he said, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers that they must leave for Galilee. There they will see me. Now while they were on their way, some of the guards went off into the city to tell the chief priest all that had happened. So the women saw him. Do you have questions? Um, what state are they in? What state are they in? They were in Galilee um, in Bethlehem. No, they weren't in Bethlehem. They're palm trees. Well, they went to Jerusalem. Jerusalem, right. Pastor. This is in Jerusalem. Look. The tomb is in Jerusalem. What is the name? Jerusalem, Jerusalem, right. <coughs> so we should not be afraid to go and tell others about God's grace either. Because everyone needs to know about God's grace in Jesus. There's no time like the present to speak the good news. So we all need to go out and share the love of Jesus and what we learn every day. Yes, Miss Silver. Um, I see the crosses back there. There's yep. two of them. There's three. Can you imagine when they went up there and he was gone? It would be like the dad put his car in the garage. And he goes down the next morning to go to work and he unlocks the garage, which would be the same as throwing a stone away. And it's not there. Poof. Poof. It's not there. Yep. Okay, so we're going to say our prayer together. Are you ready? Let's repeat this together. Your resurrection on Easter, O oh Lord, sheds new light on your love for us and brightens our every day on this earth and in the glory yet to be. Amen. Okay, so before we do our last part, okay, I gotta do a little artwork that I should have done already. Hello, okay. Kathy. Who's drawing Mr. Magoo? I forgot to. I don't know why you have nothing to do. But eat chocolate. It was Steve and Doug. Doug. Doug and Steve. Doug. Okay, this is Doug. Doug. Who wants to hold Doug? Me. All right. Since you asked first, we'll give you. Just do not drop him and do not break him yet. Because there's something you have to do with Doug. Why are you so heavy? Don't 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 ask any questions yet. We're gonna tell you. Okay. Now who over there wants to be Steve? Steve. Okay, I want to be Steve. I want to be it. Okay, we'll, we'll let you do something else here with this. Okay. Now, I need you to, we're going to need to move your Bible down out of the way. You have Doug. Okay, we're going to put this out of the way and we're going to move this so we don't have any major fires. Carol's been known to catch the oh, church on fire. Catching stuff in the church on fire. Why is this candle Okay, well, I'm going to tell you. Okay, so, I'm going to tell you. Oh, you found a penny. Okay, so one day. Yes, ma'am. Why do you have a candle? Because I'm going to light that candle. Okay, this candle, we're going to light it here with my handy lighter. It's so terrible. Okay, there's our candle. 
Okay, that candle represents Jesus light in the world, right? And what usually goes to a light? If we're if we're outside at night. Campfire. Campfire. But what creature goes like who's drawn to the light? A moth. A moth is drawn like uh, bugs at night, right? If you're out on your porch at night and you have a light, they all go to the light, right? Fireflies have their own light. I love fireflies. But anyway, this particular light here. They recharge their light. Yes, they do. They're, they have a never-ending battery. This light here represents Jesus and his light and his goodness in the world. Well, one day, listen to my story, one day... Steve, hold up Steve, put his face up. Steve decided he was going to go with his friends and not do what he was supposed to do. He was going to go watch a movie that his dad, Rich, said he wasn't allowed to watch at home. But he snuck off to his friend's house with Wade because Wade says, I'm not going to tell my mom, but we can watch it here because there's no one home. And they decided they were going to watch this movie that their dad, that Rich, told Steve he was not allowed to watch. So what do you think happened to Steve? What did Steve do? Watch the movie. He, right. He, he disobeyed. He was tempted, right? He could have chose not to because he could have said to Wade, well, I'm not watching. I can't do that. My, my dad, Rich, won't let me watch that movie. I'm not allowed. Or he could choose, he could have been tempted, because Wade, Wade's here saying, but I have popcorn to eat, and there's no one home. We can watch it really fast, <laughs> right? Has that ever happened to any of you guys? You guys ever been tempted to do something you're not supposed to be doing? Yes. Anybody? Why is she looking at you? <laughs> <laughs> is she guilty of something? Would we like to share? If she is, I don't think she's guilty alone. Probably not. Okay, so Steve was tempted, right? And Steve went ahead with Wade and watched the movie. So you're going to bring Steve over here to the fire. Stand up. Bring him over here. You can see him. You may want to. We're going to move this way just a little bit, right here between us. Okay. So Steve was tempted. But there's a difference between Steve and Doug, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Okay, put Steve up with God because he's tempted, and he does what God doesn't want. What happens to Steve when Steve does something that he knows isn't right? What do you think happens? Go ahead, touch Steve to the flame. Touch him, hold him, hold him up to the flame. Hold him up to the flame. Oh, oh, oh you're not supposed to dump him. Oh, my mercy. Go on over again. Okay, try again. Hold him to the flame. Oh! What happened to Steve? Steve That's what happens when we sin. We are dead. We, we explode. No, we don't explode. Steve had to pay for his consequences. But see, that's what happened to Steve because Steve did not know who God was. Steve had no idea that what he was doing was wrong. That's oh, wait, wow. was gonna Steve be was bad. Okay. Now then, when Doug came, Doug here. You guys see Doug? There's water in there. Sit down. Don't let him roll our secrets. Okay. Doug here. It won't hurt you. Okay, Doug. I know there is, but listen up. You know why there's water in here? Yeah. Because Doug went to church, and Doug accepted Jesus into his heart, and Doug made the decision not to go with Steve and Wade to watch the movie. I don't want it. Why is it so close to me? Well, that's because that's where you are. Okay. So what? What's the difference between Steve and Doug? Right? Okay, wait. What's the difference? He's red and Doug is no, blue. I know, I, know, I, know, I, know, I know. I know because those two are bad and Doug is good. That has something to do with it. 
Steve chose to sin, which was to disobey okay. his mom and dad. Oh, that's so cold. And Doug decided to do what was right because the Holy Spirit was in him, and he was saying, I really like to go see that, but I know it's not right. And my mom said not to, or my dad said not to, so I'm going to be good and do what the Lord would want me to do. So hold Steve up to that same fire. Yeah. Oh, no. Come here, come here. What way to do it? Okay, no, wait. I gotta show you. Hold him like this. Okay, hold his hold his head up. Hold him, hold him up against the flame. Right like this. Okay, so Steve. You think? Okay. No, we still don't have Steve close enough. Steve still isn't close enough to the flame yet. Okay, now look, Steve here, he has a little blemish on him now, right? Steve, yeah. What happened to Steve? He, There's two. <laughs> oh, he does. <laughs> Steve was double bad. He was thinking these things, but Steve didn't yeah. get hurt. Why didn't Steve get hurt or Doug get hurt like Steve did? I know why. why? Because there's heavier stuff in that. No. He has the Holy Spirit in him, which protected him. The Holy Spirit protected him. That's the same thing that happens to us. We're still going to sin. Even as Christians, we're going to sin. But because of the Holy Spirit and what Jesus dying on the cross for us, we're going to make mistakes. We're going to do bad things. But we're not, we're not going to be condemned and lost. Because we can ask for forgiveness for our sins. And that's the story of Doug and Steve. Anybody have any questions about Doug and Steve? Can we pop it? Can we pop it? Can we put Pope Francis out? No. Can I put him in here? Pop it! No, 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 pop it! No, no, no. Pop it! Don't put him in there. Pop it! I dare you. Pop it. Oh. It went out. It went out. Oh, that's because there's okay. cold water in there. All right, so that's our story about Doug and Steve and for Doug. Easter. Now, we don't want to have Doug make an accident on the floor. I do. Yay. Okay, so we're going to go now. All right, you have one more thing to do. You're going to have your seat back. We're going to. He's a seat. Yeah. 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 Ask your sister because they're hers. Okay, we're going to sing. The Amazing Grace. Yeah. Grace, Thanks. you want to come over here and push the button? She needs some. Um, she needs some. Um, okay. You can share them if you're willing. No. She said no. Share them with everybody. Everybody can have one. You've got a lot in there. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do sing our Amazing Grace here. Oh, yeah. And I need you guys to help me to follow the words of this. This is the whole song, so you'll remember it. Ready? Amazing grace.
What's his okay. name again? Can we burn him to the ground? Oh, what? No. <laughs> no. Yeah. 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 Yeah.